Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to show you guys how to handle NV images of hyperspectral information in MATLAB. Hyperspectral images are becoming more and more customary and they are also very helpful. Uh, for example, they could help us identify the material we are looking at. And sometimes they come in the format of NV. Let's get started and see how we could handle them in MATLAB. As I said in this video, I want to talk about how to handle NV images of hyperspectral data in MATLAB. Hyperspectral images contain the spectrum for each pixel in the image of a scene. They have been used for many purposes such as finding objects, identifying materials, or detecting processes. These sorts of data are a type of image with both spectral and spatial information as you can see in this image. Spatial and spectral information. Spectral information would be along this axis and spatial information would be along x and y axis. So the hyperspectral image is in a sense a cube that contains the spectral reflectance data for each point in the image. In this video I want to show you guys how to handle the hyperspectral data that are in the format of NV. NV is the industry standard for image processing and analysis. It is used by professionals across industries to extract timely, reliable, and accurate information from imagery and data because it is scientifically proven and also easy to use. The NV image format is a flat binary raster file with an accompanying header file. The NV header file contains metadata for NV format images. The header file uses the same name as the image file with the file extension HDR. I will show you guys how to read this type of hyperspectral images into MATLAB and visualize them using different approaches. Let's go to MATLAB and see how we could do that. Before we start, it will be worth noting that this MATLAB is 2022, so if you want to have this code run in your MATLAB, you have to use MATLAB 2022. Okay, now let's start. The first thing is you have to specify the path to your hyperspectral image and the path to the header file. They are usually saved in the same folder. So as you can see, this is the hyperspectral image and this is the header file. And then we would input them here into Hypercube. Data file, HDR file. The output from Hypercube is a structure called HCube. One of the data saved in the HCube is called DataCube, which is the hyperspectral image. And we use this code here to access DataCube. HCube.DataCube and then we change the hyperspectral image into a double precision using this coding. The hyperspectral image in double precision is saved in IMG. This is where we specify the spatial and spectral resolution of this hyperspectral image. The first way to visualize this hyperspectral image is to just combine three channels from the hyperspectral image and then visualize that as an image. To do that we choose one channel from the short wavelengths one channel from the middle wavelength and then one channel from long wavelength and then we combine them and we show them using IM show and that will be the simplest way to visualize this hyperspectral data. The second method to visualize this hyperspectral data is to use the colorimetric way of visualization. To do that we need to have access to the color matching function of a standard observer and also the spectral data of a standard illuminant. So these two files have been saved here. Let me open the accessory. For this one, I'm going to be using D65. And then the other data that we need is the color matching function of a standard observer, which are called XYZ. The standard observer that we use is the 1931 standard observer. So the hyperspectral data also have some data belonging to the near IR, which we're not going to use because you can't visualize them. So we only use the part that belongs to the visible part of the spectrum and we're going to be saving it in the IMG2. And then we're going to be reshaping the IMG2 into a matrix with the number of row equaling M by N and the number of columns 120. So one thing worth noting is that the data that I have from standard illuminant and the standard observer belongs to a range of wavelengths from 400 to 700 nanometer at 5 nanometer interval. But the data that I have from the hyperspectral data is not in this range. It is from 400 to 700, but it's not with this interval. 
So to estimate the data of the standard illuminant and the standard observer in the range of wavelength that I have in my hyperspectral data, I have to use interp1 to interpolate the data that I need. So in other words, I have x, which is the wavelength from 400 to 700 at 5 nanometer interval, and then I have the standard illuminant data, and then here I have xq, which is the wavelength of the hyperspectral data. And then I'm going to be estimating the spectral data of the standard illuminant in the wavelength range that I need. And then I'm going to be saving it in the VQ. The same thing I have to do with the standard observer. The color matching function of the standard observer, it's not in the range of the hyperspectral data that I have. So I have to use interpolation to estimate those data in the wavelength range that I have in my data. So x again would be that wavelength from 400 to 700 at 5 nanometer interval. And v this time would be the color matching function of the standard observer. And then xq would be the wavelength range that I have in my data. After I estimated the data of the standard illuminant and the standard observer in the range of the wavelength that I have, I have to use the function ref to xyz which changes the reflectance spectra into xyz tristimulus values. So this function changes the spectral reflectance data of the objects into CIEXYZ tristimulus values. And to do that, it needs spectral reflectance data of the object, spectral data of the illuminant, and color matching function of the standard observer. Let's open this function and see what it does. This is a very simple function, as you can see, and you could find data related to this function from any sources of color science out there. All you have to do is to just first multiply the color matching function by the diagonal matrix that contains the illuminant spectral data and then multiply that by the spectral reflectance data of the object. This spectral reflectance here is the hyperspectral data that we have. And then we would be saving it in this variable called xyz, which is CIEXYZ tristimulus values. And then we have to change XYZ into sRGB using this function. So we are changing XYZ tristimulus values into a standard RGB. Let's open this function and see what's going on in it. This is a very simple function and you could find material related to this from any resources of color science out there. All it does, it changes the CIE XYZ into a standard RGB using this matrix here, as you can see. And then you have to also make sure any sRGB larger than 1 is set to 1 and any sRGB less than 0 is set to 0. And then at the end you have to also apply the gamma correction. And then you reshape that matrix into an image and then you just show it using IM show. And then here we are just showing a specific part of the image. Okay, let's run it and see what happens. So you could see first one here is just visualization using three channels in the hyperspectral data. And then this one here is the colorimetric visualization, which looks way better than this one. Which makes sense because this is the standard way of visualization of hyperspectral data. And then this is just the part of the image that I have chosen to show. So let's show you guys what H-cube also contains. I'll go here, H-cube. You could see that it contains the spectral data, in other words, the hyperspectral data, and this is the size of the hyperspectral data, and these are the wavelengths and also the metadata, which it takes from HDR file. So let's run the wavelengths, see what are the wavelengths. Okay, I had to do it this way. I made a mistake, sorry. Dot wavelength. So you could see that these data are not in the range of 400 to 700 with 5 nanometer interval. And therefore, I needed to estimate the spectral data of the standard illuminant and the standard observer in this range. That's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you were able to learn something useful from my video. If you liked it, I would appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.